A.A.'s Sister Ignatia by Bob K. St. Thomas Hospital was where the resourceful Sister Mary Ignatia, a nun who seems to have stepped out of the bells of St. Mary, abetted the surreptitious admission of alcoholics for treatment. See Bill W. and Mr. Wilson by Matthew Raphael, page 2 and 3. Chapter Coming to America Sister Mary Ignatia was born in Ireland as Bridget Della Mary Gavin on January 1, 1889, at Shan Valley Burn in County Mayo. See Hinesfoot.org. She left this small farm to come to the United States where, in 1914, she entered the Charity Sisters of St. Augustine in Ohio. An excellent musician, she spent her first ten years as a nun teaching music. Ultimately, she found this occupation to be too stressful, and she suffered a nervous breakdown. After being ill, she was assigned to less strenuous duties. See Dr. Bob and the Good Old Timers, page 45. Assigned to St. Thomas Hospital, she first met Dr. Bob in 1928. The physician was on the courtesy staff at the Catholic Hospital. The physician's principal hospital affiliations were elsewhere. Chapter Co-Conspirators In the spring of 1939, administrators at the Akron City and Green Cross hospitals, noting that Dr. Smith's mysterious patients owed over $5,000, began scrutinizing his admissions more carefully. See not God, by Ernest Kurtz, page 79. He asked Sister Ignatia, the admissions officer of St. Thomas, if he could smuggle in some alcoholic patients. Dr. Bob knew that the good sister was sympathetic to the cause. We often discussed the problem of alcoholism and the tragedies caused by excessive drinking, according to Sister Ignatia, see Old Timers, page 185. Smith prefaced his request for assistance with a confession of his own alcoholism. Their first venture in August of 1939 was followed by many more. The sickly nun and the alcoholic surgeon cherished the thrill of bootlegging alcoholics into St. Thomas, most often under a diagnosis of acute gastritis. See Not God, page 79. The sister's co-conspirator was demanding and requested a private room for his camouflaged patients, rooms that were unavailable. There were two reasons behind the doctor's request. The first was so that any withdrawal symptoms would occur out of the view of other patients, and secondly, so that there could be discreet conversations between the patient and the string of visiting sober alcoholics. Sister Ignatia cleverly solved the dilemma by lodging the drunks in the flower room, a space used not only for the preparation of floral arrangements, but where the occasional stiff was housed while awaiting shipment to the morgue. Chapter Catholics and Protestants Over the first few months of the use of the flower room, the Catholic sisters' conversations with the endless stream of visitors revealed a distressingly Protestant ideology. This prompted concerns about the Oxford Group connection, if she were to ask Sister Administrator openly to admit Dr. Smith's alcoholics. See Not God, page 80. In early 1940, she took this problem to the assistant pastor from a nearby parish. Arrangements were made for Father Vincent Haas to attend a meeting at the King School. The young priest was entranced, enthralled, and enthusiastic, see Not God, page 80, and reported back to Sister Ignatia's administrative superior, who lent her support and cooperation in the bootlegging operation. Later, the admission of alcoholic patients was officially sanctioned. The Cleveland Catholics then carried this news back to their city and thus laid to rest 
the lingering bogey which still haunted some of that metropolis's more scrupulous Catholic alcoholics. See, not God, page 80. Until Sister Ignatia established an alcoholic ward at St. Thomas Hospital in 1939, virtually no general hospital admitted alcoholics for the treatment of their alcoholism. See, Bill W., by Francis Hardigan, page 94. Chapter, The Alcoholic Ward. It was found that the hospitalized drunks did better, not in private rooms, but when mixed with their fellows. At St. Thomas, accommodations were enlarged to an eight-bed ward. See Old Timers, page 190. Patients were allowed only AA visitors, and there were no repeaters among the patients. We learned from experience that the program is defeated in institutions where the majority of inmates are repeaters, Sister said. It creates an atmosphere of pessimism and discouragement. See Old Timers, page 191. The nun, naturally enough, stressed prayer. Although quite shy, she revealed her sense of humor when a patient asked her to pray for him. I will indeed, she said, but pray for yourself as well. There's nothing God likes more than to hear a strange voice. See Old Timers, page 192. Additionally, Sister Ignatia made a point of helping her charges through their fourth step inventories. See Old Timers, page 196. She also helped with the racial integration of AA when, in 1948, Sister Ignatia and Dr. Bob successfully petitioned the hospital to change this policy of blacks not being allowed on the alcoholic ward. See Hardigan, page 181. Akron's first interracial AA group began about this time, and until his death in 1950, Dr. Bob frequently attended. Chapter A Bad Business Model From his last drink in June 1935, AA became the centerpiece of Dr. Bob's life. He worked with Sister Ignatia to treat thousands of alcoholics who were then channeled into AA. He provided all of these services without charge. See, Slaying the Dragon by William L. White, page 186. A total of 4,800 alcoholics were admitted into St. Thomas under his care. See Old Timers, page 188. In these acts of altruism, Dr. Bob was stalwartly supported by the frail little nun. When Ann Smith died in 1949, Sister Ignatia wrote a touching letter to comfort her longtime colleague. Dr. Bob responded by expressing his gratitude for their enduring friendship. About this time, Dr. Bob made his last visit to the ward. Iggy played the organ for him in a little more than a year, he too was gone. Chapter Cleveland In 1952, Sister Ignatia was transferred from St. Thomas to administer the alcoholic ward at St. Vincent's Charity Hospital in Cleveland. At her suggestion, it was dedicated as Rosary Hall Solarium. The initials RHS carved in flowing script over the door, just happened to be the same as those of Dr. Robert Holbrook Smith. When Sister Ignatia died in April 1966, she was eulogized as a charming, radiant little woman with no other aspiration than to be a humble, dedicated, and anonymous Sister of Charity. See Old Timers, page 198. It is one of life's ironies that those who desperately pursue recognition often attain precious little, while those who shy away from it may have distinction thrust upon them. In 1961, the aging nun received a letter of praise from President Kennedy's White House. The crowd at her funeral five years later was reported to be 3,000, 
and included Bill Wilson. In 1991, she was elected into Ohio Women's Hall of Fame, and she surely remained cherished in the memories of the sundry alcoholics whose lives she touched directly. Sister Ignatia provided each patient who left her care with a sacred heart badge, caa.org. She solicited a promise to return the badge before they drank again. Many early AAers have reported clutching those badges in times of desperation. The alcoholic is deserving of sympathy. Christ-like charity and intelligent care are needed so that with God's grace, he or she may be given the opportunity to accept a new philosophy of life. Sister Ignatia, CSA. People like her give religious people a good name. About the author, Bob Kay lives in the metropolitan Toronto area and has been a sober member of Alcoholics Anonymous for 24 years and an out-of-the-closet atheist for that entire time. He has been a regular contributor to the AA Agnostica website for almost five years and, in January 2015, published Key Players in AA History. In 2013, he co-founded the Whitby Freethinkers Meeting. The original print version of this article, AA's Sister Ignatia by Bob K., may be found on the website aabeyondbelief.com in the AA History section dated December 2, 2015. This audio production was recorded on January 27, 2017. Many more stories, articles, and podcasts may be found on our YouTube and SoundCloud channels. Just search for aabeyondbelief.com.